confrontation with a long in ignored in reality. Good morning. This is Br'er Caleb, PhD, and my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. I continue to dig on the proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. Confrontation with a long ignored reality. In preparation of this video, I opened a message from a friend who stated that a doctor is still called a quack if he treats the symptoms without looking for the causes of the disease. Folks, this message came to me through Facebook. Is there a path and teaching of the way, or do we prefer spiritual amnesia? So many of us seem to suffer of amnesia when it comes down to the Word of God, for many don't care about it anymore. There is so much going on. Leaders are lying, they're causing all kinds of commotion. They kill, they steal, and destroy. It sounds almost like somebody we all know. His name is Satan, or Shatan, whatever you prefer to call Lucifer, the guy who originated this all. And now our leaders are a shining example of how not to live. According Acts 24, 14, in the complete Jewish Bible, it states, But this I do admit to you. I worship the God of our fathers, following the way, which they call a sect. I continue to believe everything that accords with the Torah and everything written in the prophets. Do we understand what Jesuai called the key to knowledge? To apply the key to knowledge in Matthew 23, verse 13 in the complete Jewish Bible, but woe to you hypocritical Torah teachers and through him, for you are shutting the kingdom of heaven in people's faces neither entering yourself nor allowing those who wish to immigrate to do so. Or in the Amplified Bible, Matthew 23, 13, the classic edition, the Amplified one. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, pretenders, hypocrites, for you shut the kingdom of heaven in men's faces. For you neither enter yourself nor do you allow those who are about to go do so. Like the prodigal son and daughter, you are the victim of spiritual amnesia, and you are blindly wandering this far country without recalling when you dwelt in the kingdom with your heavenly Father. You are dwelling in what Yeshua portrayed as the outer kingdom of mind and being. When our affliction of spiritual amnesia restores, and your inherent organic blindness heals, the original disciples condemned by Jews and Gentiles. Because the Essenes, the Ebonite Nazarenes, had nothing in common with Judaism or pagan-based Christianity. Yes, folks, pagan-based Christianity. A pagan is a heathen, a person that has nothing to do with the Lord. With the restoration of the Gospel's teachings, it will be the first time an original understanding and objective of the scripture. They were presented to the world from an, other, an actual author who has drawn upon soul memory from the life. The author lived in the first century to convey the real story and account of scriptures. It is merely proof that the foundation of the Gospels is the Essenes, and the Essenes were mystics who had virtually nothing in common with the Jews, who Jesua portrayed as counterfeit Israel. And in this respect, the Jews are not and never were the chosen people of God. I realize that I might get a lot of people upset. I will, we will repeat this. And in this respect, the Jews are not and never were the chosen people of God. And their portrayal as such has inflicted grave spiritual harm upon the Christian religion. Oh, folks, in contradiction, the Essenes were much the enlightened foundation of the church. Spiritual Israel portrayed as the sons of light, opposing the Jews, the sons of carnal darkness. And they understood the evolution of the soul during many unique lifetimes. It will remain impossible for us to understand the reality of our lives until we can understand man's paradoxal soul reality. 
So what is a paradox? It's a difficult word for some. A paradox is when two opposing and often conflicting truths are equally valid. There are foundational religious frameworks based upon the teachings that a person you are in this world lives one life, and this is a truth. But we use a paradoxical perspective. The religious framework teaches that the soul has always lived and evolves to wholeness and completion during many lives. Jesua taught and it proves that the original disciples believed in the teaching that while you only live one life, your soul evolves to wholeness during many lifetimes. And unless you bring these opposing paradoxical truths together, it will remain impossible for you to comprehend the meaning and purpose of the life you're living in. Your soul and true self came into being in the alpha of creation. In other words, in the beginning of creation to fulfill the edits of know thyself is for you as the prodigal son or daughter to overcome your affliction of spiritual amnesia. Have your soul memories restored which will enable you to know your true self and your true relationship to God, your Father, who is your one and only Father and source of being. And Jesus said, And do not call anyone on earth Father, for you have one Father, and He is in heaven. That is in Matthew 29, verse 3. God is as much your Father as He is the man Jesus' Father. And as your brother, whatever is true of the man Jesus is also true of you. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning. So Jesus says to the disciples, Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. John 20, verse 17 in the NIV. In the words of Jesus, in the Gospel of Thomas, Jesus said, But if you do not know yourself, you dwell in poverty, and it is you who are that poverty. Now, I was struggling with this concept and reading a little message again on Facebook and later on checking it out according to Dr. Sidonicus, a Jewish doctor. Okay. So I was challenged below, read the Bible. God gave the land of Israel to Jewish people. So I may get crucified for this, but I have said it most re recently, terrified, trembling to warm welcome in a synagogue in LA, that is in the United States in Los Angeles. Actually, if you read Genesis, Exodus and Deuteronomy in Hebrew as he does, you see that God did not give Israel to the Jews or the Israelites, folks. The Jews are raised with the creed that God gave us the land of Israel in Genesis. And that ethically, we are the chosen people. But actually, and I could not believe my eyes when I saw this, I checked my reading with major scholars and they confirmed it. Actually, God's government, covenant, folks, covenant, in Genesis, Exodus, and Deuteronomy with the Jewish people is not about ethnicity and not about a contract. It is about a way of behaving. Let me repeat this one more time. It's not about an ethnicity, not because you're a Jew, you automatically inherit it. He said, not about ethnicity, not about a contract. It's not, it is about a way of behaving. It's how you act again and again in the covenant language. He never says, I will give you ethnic Israelites, the land of Israel. Rather, he says something far more radical, far more subservient, far more godlike. He says, if you visit those in prison, act mercifully to the widow and the orphan. Welcome the stranger in your midst. Tend to the sick. Do justice and love mercy, perform various other ta tasks, then you will be my people, and this land will be your land. So my people is not ethnic, it is transactional. 
We are God's people, not by birth, but by a way of behaving that is ethical, kind and just. And we stop being God's people when we are not ethical, kind and just. And anyone who is ethical, kind and just is according to God in Genesis, God's people. Let me repeat this. We are only God's people when we do what God asks us to do, not because we were born into it. And the contract to give us Israel is conditional. We can live in God's land if we are God's people in this way, just, merciful, compassionate. And it never ever says it is only your land, even when passage spell out geographical boundaries, geographical boundaries, as if God does such a thing. It never says this is exclusively your land. It never says it, I will give this land just to you. Remember, those had left slavery in Jesus and were wandering around in the desert. At most, these passages say, settle here, but they do not say settle here exclusively. Again and again, it talks about welcoming Zarin, translated as strangers, but can also be translated as people, tribes who are not you in your midst. It blew my mind and I hope it will blow yours as well. This might be very, very hard for some of you and maybe for most of you, but no amount of evidence will ever convince an idiot I hate to say this, folks, but this is Brad Caleb. And I tell you, this is a truth that most of us don't want to recognize. It's a confrontation with a long ignored reality. We are all lost, prodigal sons and daughters, but we used to dwell at one time in the kingdom of God. And we can restore that relationship. Now remember, tough times never last, but tough people do. With this comes also a healing of the eyesight. Our brain capacity will be able to manage this if we open our hearts. Open your heart and God's Spirit will lead you and guide you. For we are all and can all be a brother of Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. God bless you. Bye for now.